Can you see this here? It's a, do you know what that is? Do you know what that is? You know what that is. That's Colin Kaepernick. That was uh, our official bit of um, NFL merchandise. And so this is not, there is no Nike logo on it because it was, um, it's the little, little character. But Colin Kaepernick overnight was announced as one of the uh, main characters in the Just Do It 30th anniversary commercials coming out from Nike. Sorry, Nike, to uh, give it its proper name. Nike had been paying Colin Kaepernick all along, waiting for the right moment. That moment is now as he, comes, as he becomes the face of the company's 30th anniversary of the Just Do It campaign. That was Darren Ravel's tweet yesterday, which was breaking this story. And, um, well, it nearly broke the internet as well. That and the guy uh, cutting the Nike logos off his socks um, and the various people going, whoa, I'm never going to sign, I'm never going to buy any more Nike. Uh, hashtag make America great again. But uh, it turns out this is like um, the end. Kaepernick was on a five-year deal with Nike anyway, up to this point. And obviously, stuff had happened that no longer meant that Nike was getting Kaepernick on the field of play, doing the things that Colin Kaepernick could do. Um, like People forget that he was one of the most explosive quarterbacks um, that we'd ever seen as a dual threat. That means that he can run the ball and throw the ball. There was a playoff game against Green Bay, against Aaron Rodgers' Green Bay, when they were like still in their Super Bowl window at the time, where he ran for over 230 yards, I think, which is unheard of from quarterback. And he just took off and went, and there was like two, I think there was two 80-yard runs in the first kind of 15 minutes of the game where everybody was like, what the hell is this? They'd, they'd waited and waited and waited and waited and waited until the playoffs to unleash him. And then single-handedly, the game was over at that point. Um, and, you know, he obviously gets within a throw of winning the Super Bowl and one of the greatest comebacks. And the lights go out in New Orleans. And then the next year, uh, gets within a throw of beating the Seattle Seahawks. Richard Sherman ends up tipping the ball away. That's the, you come at me with a sorry receiver like Crabtree. Um, where he's shouting at um, the reporters and he becomes famous in the aftermath of that. So that was the absolute peak level of Kaepernick. The Seahawks go on and completely kill the Broncos in the Super Bowl. So like, clearly that was another, he was within a, a throw basically of winning a Super Bowl two seasons in a row. But his career falls apart after that because of injuries and um, the uh, San Francisco 49ers completely implode. And at that point, Kaepernick decides that he is going to take a stand and... Uh, will initially sit during the national anthem. He has a conversation with uh, a military veteran who says, I think sitting during the national anthem might be a little bit disrespectful. How about if you, if you knelt, if you knelt down during the national anthem? You know, it's like people are kneeling in service. It's like you, you kneel in prayer. Might, that might be something a bit more respectful. And obviously what he wanted to protest was uh, police brutality against people of colour and uh, the injustice that people of colour in America suffer on a daily basis, and he wanted to highlight that. And obviously, it went completely massive. Uh, it ends up being something that Trump tweets about. It ends up being something that the entire NFL is now coming out to try and ban and try and inflict a policy on people who uh, won't be allowed to kneel during the national anthem that you have to stand, or if you don't, your team will be fine and you'll be fine. Uh, or you can stay, you can do what you want in the change rooms, but if you come out, you have to do it. So in the meantime, Nike, this Nike deal was still there, like because it was a five-year deal. Like all the while, he's not on the field, and it turns out Nike have been paying him, and now they've decided that they're going to make him the face or one of the faces of their Just Do It campaign. So the tagline for his one is "Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything." Um, a bit of a backlash to this, funnily enough, not just from the Make American Great morons, mm. because of you've naturally got to be cynical about all big commercial deals, and maybe we don't have to be cynical this time. Maybe there, there is all just honest effort from all parties. I think you're right to be cynical, and like, you, you know, everybody has to make their own mind up. Well, like, I'm, yeah, I, I'm not sure if my cynicism is well placed. Like, you think about perhaps that this is just the next destination in a journey of commercialism and sport, that you think about Republicans buy sneakers too, and maybe we've been towering brands like Nike with that, with that slogan, for too long now, maybe the bottom line isn't the thing that counts all the time. But then you think about it, and ultimately, if they're trying to put aside what the profit is from, say, losing all the Make America Great, again, morons, as you say, uh, over the next few months and years, well, is the legacy of this not going to get them more money in the end? Is it not going to give them like a little bit more exposure? Like The, the brand of Colin Kaepernick has strengthened so much since he got blackballed by the NFL. It has, particularly globally. 
like particularly around the world, like as you say there, like I mean, 2013, 2014, he's a superstar. But, uh, oh yeah, okay, but just to like, you just explain what that means. Though. The brand of Colin Kaepernick has got stronger. Why? Because of the taking a knee stance. Because that. Like, because of uh, what he stands for. Well, it is, yeah, but it is also to do with the mainstream coverage that uh, Donald Trump has given Colin Kaepernick in a roundabout way. It's, it is ironic, really, that it was last year when this really kind of exploded fully. Like, obviously it happened before then, but it was last year when Donald Trump makes that speech in Alabama or wherever it is saying, uh, what did he call Did he call them SOBs? Uh, he did, he called them SOBs, uh, the people who kneel for the anthem, and of course Kaepernick was the leader in all of this. And that hardens the people who supported Colin Kaepernick. It drove people further away who were may, may have been on Donald Trump's side. But the main point here is that everybody was talking about this leader of men that Colin Kaepernick had become, that this global movement, which it had become because Trump's words were putting this into the television screens and the computer screens in pretty much every house in the world because this was international news uh, on a day-by-day -day basis. Like, the Colin Kaepernick got so bloody famous outside of sport and outside of American sports in particular that Nike have got a gem. They've got an absolute gem here. But maybe they're sitting down and they're doing this for the right reasons. Like, I, there was a great Nike ad... Uh, last year or the year before with uh, Kevin Durant and Serena Williams and it was about it, it was very timely it didn't make any specific mention of police brutality but it was very timely given everything that happened about two summers ago uh, that Nike would release this ad uh, supporting people of colour and uh, like I can't remember what the actual slogan was so Nike do have form in this and ultimately when it comes to companies that are set up to make huge profits I think you just get cynical naturally and ultimately they are thinking about what the bottom line is here. Maybe they just have good ideals at heart though. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I don't know, but I think they've got profit at heart obviously and that's what they're, this is going to help uh, with that. But anyway, um, I'm a big Colin Kaepernick fan. I think, uh, I think anything that helps get his message out there ultimately is going to be a force for positive in the world.